Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Class 47 Peter and today's video is going to be a layout update now quite a lot of progress has been made on Foxhall Junction I've got lots of new ideas for the layout there have been some changes made to the layout which the eagle eyed among you might already have spotted and some of these ideas have yet to be done which are going to be happening whilst I'm filming this video so this is going to be quite a long video but it should be quite an entertaining and interesting one as well so what's been happening on the layout So the first area I'm going to show you that's been changed on the layout is this area here. Which, of all the layouts that have been changed, this is one of the few that's been changed the most, I'd say. First of all, what's different is, well, you'll remember, some of you might remember, that for the back I used some the ratio line side black fencing. I've got rid of that and I've used that security fencing which was a kit. Not quite finished yet, I've still got to get a bit more of it to fill that little bit of a gap there. But it's looking better than the fencing I had before. Last time you'll remember, uh, this road was blocked off. There was a wall there and some bushes. So you had just this road going all the way down to there, as well as of course the road for the village that could only come down to here, but then you had this, all this stretch of road here where no cars could basically get to so I basically removed the wall from there and all the bushes and I basically joined the road from the village running down all the way down to here which looks a lot better now I think also last time all this area here was painted black this area here has been painted grey so as this little bit here that now defines the road where it is. Also, we've put a some giveaway markings on the road, hence why there's no road markings there because it's giveaway. Also, there's a bottle bank there and a couple of skips, and then there's this building here, which has undergone a change as well. Another area that has changed on the layout is this area up here on the narrow gauge railway. Now before it used to be just a set of sidings. Well it's, it isn't just a set of sidings anymore because it's now an engine depot. The engine shed has been made completely from scratch by me and it's been made from corduroy card. And it's one of the few things, as I say, that's been scratch bought by me. And I really do love how this turned out. The patch effect on the roof was not intentional, I have to be honest. That was achieved by accident. It wasn't the effect I was aiming for originally, but I decided that this effect looked quite interesting, so I decided to keep it. The windows were quite fun to do. A little bit fiddly to do, but it was quite fun to do. And I've added the ash on the front there on front of the shed. Then round the back we have a lot of bushes to make it look like that bit at the back has been overgrown. And then we come round this side we have a bit, some bit of foliage just down here as well as a oil drum and we have a bloke there bending down either to pick it up or you just put it down because he's carried it over there. Most of the ballast is now gone. I have kept the ballast on this piece of track here, but all the track around here, the ballast has been covered up using black calcium sand, which does look really nice for an engine shed like this. The ballast in between the tracks was painted using some black paint. And then over here, if I just move the Brigadier lock out of the way, we have some coal staves, and these have also been scratch built by me. And they've been scratch built from 
black card and it was scratch built from black card to give the look that it was made from sheet steel basically and it was quite easy to do, just cut them to size glued the pieces together and then added some black calcium sand for the coal and this scene on the layout is now basically it's basically so that my narrow gauge engines have got somewhere to live and I am quite happy with this looks a, a bit more interesting I think than just some plain empty sidings I am going to at some point add a water tower I'm either going to buy the Batman Scenecraft narrow gauge water tower or I might attempt to scratch build one but there shall be a water tower going on at a later date one thing that has changed on the layout as well is something that if you've watched my video adding plants and flowers to the layout the eagle eyed among you may have noticed this but in past videos you may have noticed that the fencing I had in the gardens was made from it was basically this ratio trackside fencing which looks okay I think alongside the road and it looks alright in the front gardens but I used it in the back gardens as well and to be honest I didn't th think it looked as nice the only reason I used it in the back gardens was because at the time I couldn't get hold of any suitable fencing to put in the back gardens then I stumbled upon scale model scenery and saw that they were selling some garden fence panels and some concrete fence posts and so I bought some packs and they've gone in the back gardens and I do think that these fence panels in the back gardens look much better than the trackside fencing that I had before so I'm, I'm quite pleased with those and also I had some spares left over and so the fence panels have been propped up alongside this wall and the fence posts have been just stacked up there or piled up I should say rather so that's something else that's been changed on the layout okay so I've just done the road markings for the car parking spaces for the pub and what I've done is, because I couldn't get the large metal ruler, which, because I wanted to get the same width as these car parking spaces here, because the large ruler I had was too big and that the smaller ruler I had was too small, I took a piece of card, which I drew round the large metal ruler to get the same width as the car parking spaces and I drew on the white lines. So that looks really nice now. Also, I've added the lines up on that bend just there, which I didn't show you before because I hadn't yet done the white lines. But I've just done those. Also, this part of the road that runs up on this ramp up on top of here, as you can see, I, the, b before there was actually some gaps in between these sections. So they've been filled in with filler and they've been painted over with using paint the paint is still drying as you can see and also I'm going to be putting some ballards along the sides of here and some steps for the people to climb down from the car park and onto the beach which I will be doing so hopefully later in this video you'll be able to see that so I'll be looking forward to doing that moving on to another area that's been changed on the layout and it's the bridge that runs atop on the main line has the narrow gauge railway running on top of this. Now the ends of the bridge were originally made from polystyrene. Now they were okay but when I got my electric locomotives I had to modify the portals of the bridge in order for the locomotives to run with the pantographs up and when I did that that kind of ruined the polystyrene bridge, bridge end I think in my opinion that because after doing the modifications they didn't look as nice but also on the backs the paint kept peeling off and had to keep painting them so what I did was I got rid of the old bridge ends and I replaced them with new ones which had been made from cardboard as you can see 
which are much better looking, I think. And also the electric locomotives can still run under this bridge with the pantograph raised because I have done some testing before. Also this area has changed as well because before, if you remember from past videos, this area along here had, it just had a big polystyrene block from the bridge and just some Mother Railway scatter and scenery on it, which basically blocked this road off because you had a bridge here you can imagine the road goes that way but it meant that the cars couldn't come that way and into basically where the street is onto the main road I have no idea why I did it like that and to be quite honest I didn't really like that so I thought it was best to change that so I took a bread knife to that polystyrene block sliced it at an angle like that and that has meant that I can have the bridge look, sorry, having the road looking as it is. So it now curves up, up, up around there. So you can use your imagination, it joins up to that road there. Just in between that bridge there. It's also meant I could extend the pavement, which meant I could have more buildings on as well at the back. So that's another area that's been changed. We also have a nice long row of buildings now in the street because before half of the street didn't have any buildings in but that's changed now. Most of the buildings are lower leaf, not all of them but some of them are. Up here we have a mech calf kit of a timber frame shop front that looks really nice there on the end. Then we have these two lower leaf terrace houses which you saw me do a video on these. These are the kits that came with the BRM magazine in one of their issues. And I did a video showing you making that one just there. And I'm really quite pleased with those. Then you have some low relief Metcalf kits of a butcher and a pub and a shop there. You've got a model shop there. A low relief kit made from Metcalf. Got to have a model shop on the layout. There's a restaurant there, a cafe and a bakery. You also have the cinema there and a cafe, a post office, a chemist. an estate agents and a pub got some more terraced houses and then you've got a station building this is the Oakworth station building which you got from the Batman Railway Children train pack now that used to be on the station over here but then when I had the narrow gauge railway running at the back of the station I had to get rid of the building off the platform I mean it never really fitted on it anyway because it overhanged so that had to go so I have put it in the main street here because the idea there is that there's a low relief line because you can have a high level and a low level line it does happen in real life so the idea is, is that this main line can be the high level and there can be a low level branch line that runs up to the seaside I've also added a little station sign there as well as you can see we've also got a sand house there that's a Metcalf kit. We've also got what's also going to be either a tea room or a cafe. I will get a sign made up for that at some point. And then just at the end we have what's just going to be a random storage facility. So I think I have a nice selection of buildings there in the street. And that's finished the street off very nicely. Especially, just look at that up against the back scenes. I mean that looks brilliant in my opinion. Foxhill Junction now has a new foot crossing. Now the last one I had, it was a bit crude, I'll be honest. The footpath itself for the foot crossing was just painted on with grey paint and the foot crossings themselves were just pieces of cardboard painted and then glued on. So when I went into the Scale Model Scenery website I found the 
foot crossing kit. I bought a couple of those, and those kits have replaced the original footpath. And it goes without saying that this footpath looks much better than the one I had before. To be honest, I recommend anything from Scale Model Scenery. I have bought a lot of stuff from them lately, and they do make a lot of fantastic products. So I recommend you buy the Scale Model Scenery stuff. There are a few areas, such as here, there, and here where the grey paint from the original footpath is still showing. I am thinking about possibly getting some ballast to cover up these bits but then I might actually leave them so it looks like where it's showing bits of the original footpath. I don't know, I'm in two minds about that. So I'm really quite pleased with this footpath now. I did to touch up a few areas on it, particularly with the yellow lines on the outsides also, this bit here that runs across in the middle of the narrow gauge line, that piece there had to be cut to size to fit in the in between the rail. So this was quite fun to do. It was quite a fun kit to put together. And also, there's two stop-looking listen lines on either side of it. And there's also the same sign over there and. Those are made from right track signs, so they look really nice. And again, it's details like this that just add to the layout, they just add to the detail. So, quite pleased with that. I've also added some signs on the layout as well, mainly signs directing people how to get to the station. So there's one there, there's one down there, there's one there, and it is worth mentioning that these signs are made by Right Track Signs, and these are the ones where you can choose your own station name. There's another sign there, and there's one just there, and there's one there. Obviously, it's facing that way so traffic coming at the petrol station they can see the sign showing them how to get to the station and there's another sign just there and then over here on the station canopies at the front we have two signs now my layout as you know is called Foxhill Junction so the station is called Fox Hill as you can see and so I've glued those two signs on the two canopies there for the station and also some of the signs actually do say Foxhill Station on them some of these little roadside signs that one there and that one there which you can't quite see at the moment but I will show you from another view now some of these buildings have now been given some TV aerials this pub here has a TV aerial. This pub over here also has a TV aerial. And these two terrace terraces here also have a TV aerial on the chimneys as well. And most of these buildings here in the village, all except the village school, have an aerial. So you've got this house here has one, you've got this pub here, you've got the village shop because the idea is, is that the people who run the shop live here so there's a TV all there so they can watch the telly, why not? This house here has a TV aerial and this bungalow has a TV aerial as well. Now I know some of these aerials are not straight some of them are a bit wonky but that's not really a problem because the TV aerials in real life on chimneys are never always perfectly straight. I have come across some wonky TV aerials where they're not dead straight and quite a few of these TV aerials 
iron oh, no, straight on the chimneys, but to have a few that aren't, it adds that little bit of variety. Because I have come across some chimneys where the TV aerials, like I say, are wonky. So that's a nice bit of variety to add. And if you're wondering about the TV aerials, they are Batman Scenecraft ones. And I do think that they look quite nice. Now, this road has also had some changes made to it. First of all, there are now some pavements that have been painted in place, so we've now defined where the road actually is and, and the fact that there's a road actually there now. Because before, all this area here was painted black. So, to be honest, it didn't look very realistic and you couldn't really tell where the road was. But now you can. So down here the pavement has been extended out a bit. This here has been made into a car park. Here you have the limousine. It's not a stretch limousine but it's a limousine. And you've got the wedding scene just here. You've got all this pavement here. Because before it only used to be a very small pavement. Now it's a much bigger pavement. So I can put more people there now. And the pavement runs all the way down to there. And all this pavement that was here before has been given a repaint because when I mixed some grey paint it was a lighter shade so I thought it made sense that I was painting in the new pavement that I might as well repaint some of the existing pavement that was already there as well, the same colour so it matches and blends in. We've also got a pavement along here as well so it means that people can actually walk along here and up to the steps there and onto the platform and that pavement runs all the way up along here and you've got this space here which is intended as a, as a car park so you've got the E-type Jaguar there, you've got a woman there approaching the car ready to get in there and then this area here I've covered that with static grass because on the side of some roads you do get some grass growing and so I've put the static grass there which is this stuff here which has been used on other areas on the layout as well this is the wild grass and that's just been added on that area there and that's just to add extra interest and so I do think this road now looks much better now you have to excuse all the cars that are over here I just put them there whilst I was painting the pavements on so I've added a couple of the scale model scenery signal slash trackside telephones. I had a pack of four of them, you get two wall mounted ones and two post mounted ones. Here's one of the post mounted ones that I've added right next to this set of points that lead up into the engine shed. So the idea there is that any locomotives coming on shed or off shed, the drivers can just walk up to the telephone there and use the telephone to tell them that they need to come on shed or off shed you get the idea with that. And the other post mounted telephone has gone just here by the foot crossing as you can see. And as for the wall mounted telephones I've added one down here by the signal box and the other one has been added at the back of the footbridge which you can see just there. So they are quite nice to have on the layout. You do get some posts as well for the post mounted telephones but for some reason I didn't have the posts that you get to glue on the telephones which is basically like a plastic wire. So, But thankfully because there are some signs that come with the foot crossing there was a few rods supplied with that so I just simply cut them to size and glued them on the post mounted telephones so that sorted that little problem out so it doesn't matter too much I've added some of the Batman scene craft satellite dishes the wall mounted chop has one just there I've added one on the pub and one in that house there so basically all the houses on this side have them facing this way and the houses facing over there have them facing that way if that makes sense the shop has one just there as you can see as does the bungalow 
Then these two terry saves over here have one each. So there's one there. And one there. This pub has one there as well in the what's going to be a pub garden. Eventually. Or at least there's a place where people can sit here. So we'll at some point get some benches and put them there. And then this pub here also has one in the pub garden. Which you can see just there. As you can see. And so they are worth getting. And it's details like that that do add so much more detail and realism to the buildings. So I definitely worth recommend you get some of those. So I've built up these palletalized red bricks which are made by scale model scenery and they are quite nice kits and they're quite fun to put together and the detail on them is really quite nice and I've put them in this area over here and they do look really nice over there I think I might have to get some pallet trucks now and put them in that area there with the red bricks there the signal box has now got some nameplates. Scale model scenery do some nameplates for signal boxes. You can choose the name of the signal box you want and they make it for you basically. And so I ordered some nameplates for my signal box from them. So my layout is called Fox Hill Junction as you know. The station on the layout is called Fox Hill. And so, appropriately, the signal box is called Fox Hill Signal Box. And the detail on the nameplate really is fantastic. It has, it's got, it's basically got the black background with the white text. And the detail on that is superb. And I've added the nameplates on both sides of the signal box. And there's the other nameplate on the other side of the signal box. So I really do recommend you get these to put in your signal boxes. And like I say, the detail on them is fantastic. Another scale model scenery product I've added in this back garden where the bungalow is, is a bonfire. Again, like I say, also made by scale model scenery and I've just turned the lights off. And again, give it a sec. Just take a little while for the lights to come off. There you go. Look at that. I mean, that looks fantastic especially with the lights turned off and so I just had to have a bonfire in a back garden on the layout somewhere because you do get that of course in back gardens and so I had to get one for the layout in the garden somewhere do excuse the to focus there I might add a person or two around that at a later date but yeah I mean that looks brilliant and so again I highly re recommend that as well so when I saw that I just had to buy it a couple of more extra details have been added onto the engine shed on the narrow gauge railway we have this guy here he's one of the Batman Syncraft loco crew and he's a fireman and I've basically put him by the coal staves so it looks like he's shuffling coal there's also a couple of oil drums next to the coal staff there and there's another oil drum just down there by the shed also on the engine shed I've also added some loco crew we have two guys there standing around the barrel fire originally I was going to put some barrels next to the barrel fire but I decided not to in the end I decided to change that and the guys that you see here standing around that barrel fire they are from the Backerman Loco crew pack I mean just look at that I mean that just looks that is such a good scene to have on the layout that is and also over here I've added another guy standing on this coal stay here and again just like the guy up there on the narrow gauge railway who I've also added by the coal stakes over there I've added in there so it looks like he's shoveling coal 
I've added some Batman Scenecraft CCTV cameras as well in places. There's one there by that waiting room just at the front of the station. I've also added one here by that station over there. And also by these terraced houses. They each have a CCTV camera as well, as you can see. I've added one there by the bungalow and there where the grocery store is. The village shop of course also has a CCTV camera. As does that pub there and this house here. And also there's one by the school as well as you can see just there. So that's a detail that, you know, really has improved the buildings, I think. Especially because you do see CCTV cameras outside of houses and buildings. So it's details like that that, you know, they make all the difference. This part here of the seaside has had some changes. As you can see, in the past there used to be some of the ratio plastic fencing the line tie plastic fencing that was running atop of the ramp there. I've got rid of those and in place of that you have the scale model scenery bollards which I think look much better on top of there. Also there were some gaps in between those in bits of the ramp because it is made of polystyrene there were gaps in between them and so I've got rid of them by just simply using filler and then painted over on top of them and also I have added some steps as well so the people when they're walking on top of the ramp they can just simply walk down here on these steps onto the beach because before I didn't have any steps there so I had to put that bit of detail in and those steps have been made from scratch the handrail there in the middle that's been made out of some plastic rod that you get with the signs with the scale model scenery foot crossing that I have on the layout and that took a while to get that handrail right also on the seaside over there I've added the scale model scenery beach huts and they really do look nice over there on the beach I think I've added them on the decking as you can see I've yet to put some steps of some form on the decking but that'll be done at a later date also there's a couple of ice cream vans over there I probably won't keep them together like that, I might spread them out at a later date, but that's just seeing how they look there, and they look alright there, I think. There is still some other details to be added, I've still got a lot of other figures to add, which will be done at a later date. The station on the layout has also had some changes. For a start, and this is something that, for those who have seen the latest review videos, will probably have noticed. But as you can see on the layout, we have two new waiting rooms. Now originally I was using some triangle waiting rooms and I got rid of them because they don't look as nice and they're a bit plastic and toy like. And so the waiting rooms we have now on the station platforms are the lower Scaldale ones. And the detail on these is miles better than the triangle ones and they just look so much nicer on the layout as well. Also I have added some platform help points as well which are made by scale model scenery. I've got one there on the end of the waiting room. There's one there on this waiting room and I've also added one there by that waiting room just there. And they are kits as well. So you know they again that's detail that really does add to the layout especially on the platforms and what I've also added are these anti-trespass grids that I've added on all the station platforms. I bought three packs in total to cover the whole platform up. On each platform that is. And again it's details like that that, you know, again, they add to the layout, especially on the station. Because I have been to station platforms and they do have the anti-trespass grids on the ends of the platform. 
So that's where I got the inspiration and the idea from to put them on the ends of my platform. And I've also added some anti-trespass grids down there as well as you can just about make out. And also by the signal box there I've added a couple of bollards made by Scammel the Scenery. Now a little project I've been working on lately is what you can see right in front of you. You will have seen pictures on the Facebook page and my Instagram page for this YouTube channel if you've been on either pages that is. And it involves Mr Bean's Mini which you can see in front of you here. Now I have always wanted to model a scene from Mr Bean to have on the layout and what I've done is I've modelled a scene from an episode which the scene I've modelled from is from Do It Yourself Mr Bean where Mr Bean is driving his car while sat in an armchair on the roof and that's exactly what I've done here the car is made by Oxford Diecast the armchair is made by Scale Model Scenery the figure who I've painted in to look like Mr Bean which he does is one of the cheap figures you can acquire off eBay for £2.40. I've also glued some string on the armchair to make it look like the chair has been fastened down onto the roof of the car. And I've also opened up the windows because you can just about see there I've added the mop and the broomstick which Mr Bean did use in that episode. Although I couldn't actually find a mop double L gauge scale so I've used a rake but you can pretend that it's a mop and this is a scene that I think will not only add more interest to the layout but it's something to add a bit of humour to the layout as well so when I, when I look at it it brings a smile to my face it's something to have a good giggle about as well so it's things like this as well that, you know that do add interest to the layout I think Okay, so I think that will do for this video, I think. This video has been long enough. So there's a lot of things that have happened on the layout that I've shown you. That I think is enough to make this video entertaining. There are some other bits I can do on the layout, which will be shown in a future video at some stage. When you get around to doing them. But for now, thanks for watching this video. I know this has been a long overdue layout update, but... Better late than never, as they say. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope you've enjoyed watching it and found it interesting. As ever, subscribe to the channel and check out all my other videos. And I'll see you again soon for the next video. So I hope to see you for then. But until then, take care. Over and out.